Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Something, Marlo? Uh, me? You. What are you afraid of? Of course, I ain't been much afraid of anything since the second battle of Bull Run. That so? Oh. I took my first bullet at Manassas Gap. <laughs> I thought sure I'd die, but I didn't. That's nothing. When I got shot on the Chattahoochee River over in Georgia, I knew I wouldn't die. How'd you know? I just knew, that's all. Weren't you afraid? Afraid of what? Dying. I've never been afraid to die. Well, I'm not afraid. Not anymore. Not since Bull Run. And what's all this about there being no moon, Orlo? I said I'm not afraid to die. I didn't say I'm not afraid of anything. Oh, shut up. Okay. Hey, Gorse. Yeah? Wished we could stop and light a fire. What? I got some pork to cook. Listen here, Orlo, you trying to tie the rope around your own neck? No. Then eat your meat raw, you hear? Raw meat gives me the bellyache. You needn't worry about that, Orlo. Those people back in Dodge, they got a cure for bellyache. They have? You, they have. A lariat rope over the limb of a cottonwood tree. Oh, they ain't going to catch us. They will or you go building bonfires all over the prairie to cook your dang pork with. Well, I'll just build a little bitty Indian fire, Gord. Oh, huh? shut up. <coughs> Orlo? Hmm? Look over there. Where? Where? Over there. It's the foot of that little rise. Oh, I don't see nothing. That cabin, you do too see. Oh, that... What about it? There's no light in it, you fool. And there's no smoke. It's deserted. Well, that's good, ain't it, Gorse? Nobody to tell the posse which way we went. How do you know they got a posse? Well, they should have. Anyways, we'll sleep in that cabin. Somebody does come along, we can fight them off from there. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. For us, anyway. Come on, maybe mm. there's some food inside. <clears throat> hey, wait. There's a horse in here. He must have got in and the door blew shut. Poor thing. Well, get him out. Yeah. Easy, boy. Easy now, sir. Easy, boy. I, I got him. Now, outside, fella. Outside. Come on. Yeah. Hey, that's funny. What's funny? That horse. He's all wet with lather. 
slab. Hold it right there. Hey. There's somebody in there. Now get your hands up. What? You're framed in the door and you'll die if you make a wrong move. Now turn around and stand there. And I'll take your guns. Who are you, mister? All right, get outside. Slow. All right, that's far enough. Now you can turn around. All right, you, what's your name? Orlo. Orlo what? Just Orlo. And you? William Goss, but I don't use the William. I'll remember that. Look, mister, we don't mean no harm. We just thought your cabin was deserted and we could sleep in there tonight. It's deserted, but you won't be sleeping anywhere tonight. Now, mister, you got no right to... You'll sleep in Dodge when we get there. Oh, no. No, we can't go back to Dodge. No? Why can't you? Well, you see, we shot a man there today. This morning it was. All of you shut up. But, Gorse, you know we can't go back. I'll shut you up. Hold it, Gorse. Well, he always did talk too much. The war made him like that, mister. He was all right before the war. So they say, anyway. Now, listen to me, both of you. This isn't my cabin. It isn't? Then why'd you put us out of it? I'm trying to tell you why. I'm a United States Marshal. What? Oh, of course. We got caught. You're both under arrest for murder. Well, I'll be. So that's why his horse was hot. He'd been chasing us, of course. How could he have been chasing us? He was in front of us. I've been on your tail ever since you ran out of Dodge. The trail you were following led right here, so I made a circle and waited for you. Does that explain things? Hey, that's pretty smart, isn't it, Gorse? (laughs) We was riding too slow. Yeah. But if I'd known what I was following, I think I'd have just ridden up behind and yelled at you to stop. We'd have run. Now explain something to me, will you? What are you men? We're just friends. Yeah, me and Gorse been friends for a long no, time. No, 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 that, that's not what I meant. Look, you shot that store clerk in Dodge and you killed him. But you're sure not gunmen and you're not bandits. Now, what are you? We're broke. We needed some money. But he wouldn't give it to us. He grabbed a gun instead out under the counter. And he'd have shot us with a two or... We had to kill him. That's all there is to it, Marshal. Not quite, I'm afraid. You killed a man, and I'm taking you in for murder. They're going to hang us? Not they. The law, maybe. But you'll get a fair trial. Won't matter. We done it. We'll hang. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Gus. We'll hang, sure. I don't know. I suppose you'd have killed somebody sooner or later. All right, get your horses. Ain't you going to handcuff us or nothing? Why? Oh, no reason, Marshal. I was just asking. I thought so. All right, come on. It's a long ride to Dodge. It took all night to ride back to Dodge. But I didn't have to watch my prisoners any more than if they'd been a couple of riders I'd thrown in with on the trail. Maybe it was all their years in the war, in the army, that made them do whatever I, as a marshal, told them to do. The idea of not obeying me never occurred to him. Next morning, I had Chester lock him up, and then I went off to get some sleep. About noon, I got up, ate something, and dropped into the Texas Trail. Sit down, Matt. Yeah, sure, Kitty. I uh, hear you brought in those murderers. Yeah, yeah, I did. Well, aren't you glad? Yeah, sure, Kitty. I'm glad. Well, they're the ones, aren't they? You got the right men. Yeah, they're the ones. They did it. Matt, sometimes I don't know... Kitty. What... They're, they're just a couple of not very bright men who... who've had too much war. I guess they just got used to killing. I don't think it means anything at all to them. Well, then... They're what... not mean and they're not vicious. They're just kind of loco. Well, that's what makes them dangerous, I guess. Marshal mm. Dillon? Uh, yeah. I hear you brought in two men this morning, uh, Gorse and Orlo. Uh-huh. 
How do you know their names? Well, everybody does by now. Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, they didn't do it, Marshal. What? They're innocent. They didn't kill that clerk. Who are you, mister? My name is Blaine, George Blaine. All right, Blaine, what's this all about? Well, what I said, Marshal. They're innocent. You see, uh, I and Ned and Lou, well, over there at the bar, we saw them just leaving Kelly's stable when that shooting took place. Would you swear to that in court? Why, sure, Marshal. <laughs> How come you arrested them anyway? Well, I'll tell you, Blaine... They shot a man. Nobody saw that killer. Look, I don't know who you are or what your interest in this is, but they admit killing that clerk. So why don't you just go back and join your friends at the bar and forget about it, huh? No, Marshal, we won't forget about it. You shouldn't have arrested those men. And what's more, we're going to see to it they don't stay arrested. Oh? You want to see to it right now, Mr. Blaine? No. No, there are other men around here interested in justice, Marshal. And I think we'll talk to them first. Don't do it, Blaine. Don't get anything like that started here in Dodge. See you later, Marshal. Who is he, Kitty? I don't know, Matt. He and his two friends came in on a Santa Fe from St. Louis a couple of days ago. That's all I know. I wonder what they got in mind. Oh, they've been drinking. It's just talk, Matt. Yeah, maybe. I'll see you later, Kitty. So long. Hurry back, Matt. Return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, tomorrow night, CBS Radio's Escape dramatizes a romantic conflict titled El Guitarado, which means the guitarist. It concerns a Mexican musician who resorts to traditional and some surprising methods to protect his marriage when an American poet tries to steal his wife. Remember, it's tomorrow night on Escape, presented on most of these same stations by CBS Radio. El Guitarero. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. No, sir, Mr. Dillon, that fellow come here, but I wouldn't let him talk to prisoners. Was he alone, or did he have his two friends with him, Chester? No, he was alone, sir. But I did notice a couple of men waiting around outside now that you mention it. You, uh, haven't heard anything about this Blaine or his friends the last day or so, have you? No, sir. Nobody's mentioned them. Around me, anyway. Well, it sure stumps me. You think maybe they're going to cause trouble, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. They might try, but it'd be easier to stop if I knew what was behind it. Yes, sir. Yeah, mobs have tried to open this jail before... But to lynch somebody, not to turn them loose. Mighty curious, all right. Well, Chester, I'm going to have a talk with the prisoners. Maybe they might know something. Well, it's worth a try, sir. Yeah. Hey, Gorse. It's the Marshal. Hello, Marshal. Hello, Orlo. Gorse. How are you, Marshal? Well, is Chester treating you all right? Well, it uh, wasn't much of the bait we had this morning, but the noon meal was fine. Marshal? Hmm? We get supper, too? Of course you do. And when are they going to hang us, Marshal? Well, uh, Orlo, you haven't been tried yet. Nothing's going to happen until you have a trial. How long will that take, Marshal? Well, what difference it make, Gorse, as long as we get fed every day? Uh, listen, you man, I, I want to ask you something. Sure, Marshal. Have you ever heard of a man named uh, Blaine? Uh, he's tall, has black hair. Blaine. He's, uh... Wasn't that the fellow's name who was here this morning all over? Yeah, that's right, Blaine. Here this morning? Chester said he kept him out of here. 
Oh, he he come around back, outside, talk through the window there. Seemed like a nice fella. Sort of crazy, though. Now, what do you say that, Ella? What do you want? Oh, he kept saying he had uh, witnesses and all like that. Said we're innocent. We shouldn't be in here. Well, what'd you tell him? Well, we told him how you caught us and what we did and all. We told him there wasn't any witnesses we could see. Just us. And that clerk, but we killed him. Sure, but Blaine was saying him and his friends saw us down by some corral or something. I don't know. He was all mixed up. Tell me, have uh, either one of you ever seen this Blaine before? Oh, no, Marshal. Never laid eyes on him. And that's the truth. That's right, Marshal. Me and Gorse, we never tell lies. Yeah, I know. Did uh, Blaine tell you what he's going to do? What his plans are? Never a word, Marshal. Except he did say for us to set up a holler that we didn't kill that fella. Oh, he's crazy, that Blaine. I couldn't get his drift at all. Well, I'll tell you what it is, Orlo. For some reason that I don't know, Blaine wants you two out of jail. He may come here with a mob and try and get you out. Well, he can't do that. We're under arrest here. Yeah, I know. But he might try. Hmm. What'll we do about it, Marshal? Nothing, of course, nothing. I'll handle it. You sure, Marshal? Uh, let me know if you need anything, huh? Oh, we're fine, Marshal. Thanks just the same. Sure. Okay. I'll see you later, then. Ah, hello, Doc. What are you doing here? I heard there might be some excitement, Matt. Oh, you did, huh? Yeah, right here at the jail, too. <laughs> Give Doc a gun, Chester. We can use another man. Name your preference, Doc. Shotgun or rifle? You sit right where you are, Chester. I'm not a gunfighter. My work begins where you fellas leave off. Well, you may have a busy evening, Doc. But I hope not. You never can tell, Matt. <laughs> but I take things as they come. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I better go and get my office cleaned up. If anyone gets shot, you send them right up there. It doesn't improve a man's temper to spend the afternoon sitting around and waiting for a mob to form. A mob that's going to head his way when it gets its spirits high enough. Chester and I didn't talk much. We just sat and waited. Long about dusk, we saw a couple of dozen men gather in the middle of the plaza. And then Blaine appeared, and he began haranguing them. And the crowd grew. In a little while, it started moving down Front Street, down toward the jail, and us. Looks like everybody in Dodge is taking an interest, Mr. Dillon. We'll use shotguns, Chester. I never saw a mob yet that was eager to jump a shotgun. Yes, sir. Here's yours, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, thanks. Well, let's go meet him outside, Chester. All right, sir. Here, this is good enough. Pretty big crowd coming, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, maybe most of them are just curious. I sure am, anyway. What do you mean, sir? Well, I haven't got this Blaine figure, that's all. Sure. Morning. All right, hold it, man. Hold it, man. I'll see if I can talk some sense into the marshal first. Well, marshal, I was right. There seem to be a lot of men in Dodge interested in justice. We want Orlo and Gorse out of that jail, Marshal. We want them freed. Aren't you going to say anything, Marshal? I don't see your two partners, Blaine, whatever their names are. Don't you worry about them, Marshal. Now, you tell us. Uh, you going to turn those prisoners loose, or do you want us to do it? Well, speak up, Marshal. Which way is it going to be? All right. All right. Now, you've all heard Blaine's story. 
He claims he and his friends saw Orlo and Gorse at Kelly's stable when the shooting took place. Now, that's pretty good evidence that they didn't kill that clerk. And it could be true. I'm going to go inside and I'm going to talk to him about it. And I'll give you my answer in half an hour. Now, is that fair enough? Yeah, a half hour will just about do it, Marshal. I think it will, Blaine. But no matter what you decide, we're going to turn them loose. Isn't that right, man? Chester, keep an eye on Blaine. Don't let him leave here if you have to shoot him to keep him around. Yes, sir, but I don't understand why you Just you're... do as I say, Chester. Yes, sir. What's doing, Marshal? I don't know, Gorse, but I just might find out. This Dodge is a mighty strange place, wanting to turn prisoners loose. Yeah. I'll be back soon. You're going to break my window with those rocks. Get on here, Doc. I need you in hurry. Huh? Oh, well, sure, man. Stand under the window here, and I'll climb down on top of you. It's only a few feet. Okay. Ah. All right, come on, hurry. Yeah, well, what's this all about, Matt? Where, where, where are we going? We're going to the express company first. Well, what for? It's closed. Maybe not. It's not quite six. Everybody in Dodge is out there in the street. I was watching from my front window. Not quite, everybody, Doc. Blaine's two friends aren't there. Yeah, right. Well, what do you I'm mean? working on a hunch, Doc. If I'm right, I want you as a witness. And we'll go back and show that mob what fools they are. Yeah, whatever you say, Matt. Uh, but I haven't got a gun. Don't worry. I'll do the shooting. We reached the ex- rear of the express company, and I took a quick look through the window. The single room was deserted. And the only other place would be the bank, if I was right. And I was. Two horses were tied to a tree outside the back entrance, the door of which was ajar. I made Doc get around the corner of the building where he'd be safe. And I stood close to the door and waited. In about five minutes, I heard him coming out. Let's get that mask off. Yeah, we'll hide the stuff at the stable, go down and join Blaine. Hurry, Lou, we're late now. Get your hands up. This is a shotgun. Don't use it. You, you got us. Don't shoot. Well, you're not the fightingest men I ever saw. All right, I'll take your guns now, and don't try anything. And yours? Doc. Yes? Well, what do you know? Blaine's partner's. You sure guess right, Matt. Now, who's inside? Uh, we didn't hurt him, Marshal. Just tied him up. Who, I said. Well, that old man, the banker. Mm. All right, go take a look at him, Doc. Take those money bags with you. But be quick, we haven't got much time. company for you shortly, gentlemen, so you just sit quiet, huh? Blaine's going to be mighty surprised at this. Come on, Doc. My gracious, I thought you was never going to come out, Mr. Dillon. Well, Marshal, are you going to be smart? Are you going to turn them loose? You're under arrest, Blaine. What? Marshal, don't be a fool. You aren't arresting anybody. Is he, man? Tell him who I just locked up, Doc. All right. Uh, That's right, man. Marshal just arrested Blaine's two friends. What? You make one move and I'll cut you in half, Blaine. All right, go ahead, Doc. Uh, I was right there with him. Caught him up the street, right in the bank. 
They're locked up inside right now. Well, they're, they're no friends of mine. We've been drinking together, that's all. And besides, I wasn't anywhere near that bank. I was right here. Yeah. You men saw me here. And you got nearly everybody else in town here, too, Blaine. So your partners could work unmolested. Take his gun, Chester. Yes, sir. All right. All right. All right, you men. Now, you've made fools enough of yourselves for one evening. Now, you go back where you came from and stay there. Now, go on. Inside, Blaine. Your friends are waiting for you. I never did find out just who Blaine was. He kept his mouth shut all through the trial. It could be that he'd never been arrested before. But anyway, he and his partners got five years. That's better than Orlo and Gorse made up. They stood up and told their whole story as straight as if I'd told it myself. I guess telling the truth was about the only sense of right and wrong that the war had left them. They weren't bad men, but they were dangerous. And early one morning, a month later, up in Hayes City, on the order of the court, Orlo and Gorse were hung. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Daner and Harry Bartell, with Lawrence Dobkin and Lou Krugman. Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. Gunsmoke is heard by our troops overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. This Monday evening, Dan Daly and Deborah Padgett are the stars in Deadline, U.S.A., a dramatic thriller adapted from the movie and presented by your Lux Radio Theater. It's an action-filled story of a newspaper man's struggle against hoodlum elements in his community, one that leads to dangerous reprisals on the part of the mobsters. Remember, this Monday night over most of these same stations, CBS Radio offers Deadline USA on your Lux Radio Theater. George Walsh speaking. America is cooking with 14 million kitchen radios and listens most to the CBS radio network. Mm-hmm.